Welcome to the NMAA Selection Show for the Rudy's Real Texas Barbecue State Volleyball Championships. Can you dig it? See what I did there? Dig volleyball. Okay, stop with the eye rolls. I see you out there watching St. Michael's. Also a shout out to the three M's, Melrose, Mountain Air, and Magdalena. They're watching today and yeah, that's right. Piedra Vista, I see you out there too. Remember the seating today is based on criteria that was voted on by the member schools. Here are some of the elements considered. The finish in regular season district play, head-to-head -head matchups, wins against other district champions regardless of class, overall record, max preps rankings, as well as input from the schools. No opinionated input from the NMAA staff is given. It's all data driven. Let's get to the seating and the grouping for pool play. That's what you're all here for, right? You're waiting. Well, we will start in Class A, and your top team in the field is Logan. They won the 2A title last season and have nine players back from last year's squad. Robert Young's group finished the regular season 17-3. They swept Melrose on Saturday for the 18th win. Juniors Jordan Hines and Carly Webb lead the team in kills with over 250. Senior Cassidy Cordova leads the team in digs, and junior Jordan Hines is tough at the net. Here's how the pool play stacks up. Logan is grouped with Grady, San Hone, and House, as well as Santa Fe Waldorf. Melrose earned the two seed. They have some quality wins over Texco, Logan, and Mesilla Valley. They returned five starters from last year's title team. They are anchored by senior captain setter Kiki Royball. Melrose is grouped with Pine Hill and Fort Sumner. Elida Tatum and Gateway Christian will battle it out. Kamado is having their best season ever. They were undefeated until dropping one to Melrose a little over a week ago. Kamado is 20 and one. They are pooled with Des Moines and Mountain Air. Back to Elida for a moment. For the first time since 2010, the Elida girls volleyball team won't enter the state volleyball tournament as the defending state champ. Last season, the Tigers were going for their eighth straight state title, but they lost to Melrose in the championship. We're not the number one ranked team right now. Um, and so that's kind of got a little monkey off our back. Um, but yeah, we got beat last year, and so that's kind of got us hunger in a different way this year. 1A is officially out there. Let's move on to Class 2A. The top team in the field is, who was it? Masia Valley, that's who it was. They are 16-2 and, and coached by Deborah Taylor. They have three seniors on this squad, including Annika Khan, who battles cystic fibrosis, a condition making it difficult to breathe. But she is one special student athlete. Cystic fibrosis is part of what makes me the person I am today, but it does not define who I am. When I was younger, I was very discouraged by my disease and saw it as something that would always limit me and hold me back from reaching my full potential. However, my mentality completely changed once I reached high school. I no longer saw CF as something that restricted me from living a normal life, but instead something that motivated me to live a life that was not normal at all for a CF patient. I became confident and proud in the person I was and wanted to be an example and inspiration for others facing challenges with this disease or any other disease one may believe to hold them back. My lung doctor now uses my accomplishments to encourage new CF parents who fear their child's future and capability to do certain activities. I want to constantly show people that disabilities don't always mean you aren't able to do or achieve something, but may mean you have to work harder and longer to do it or achieve it. For example, before I set out to do something, I never know if my lungs are physically going to allow me to complete the task, but I always know I, that I'm going to try. With this new mindset of mine, I became very involved physically in sports and socially through clubs and helping around my school. I became determined to never let CF stop me from setting out to reach my goals and being accomplished in my athletics and academics. As every year became more competitive and the competition got better than my athletics, my disease became more challenging. Yet, as a freshman, I played three varsity sports, won all district my junior year of volleyball, and won all district for basketball my sophomore and junior year. I also had the honor of being nationally recognized and receiving Max Preps Player of the Week for basketball last year, all while maintaining a 4.0 GPA at a private school. Between doctor's appointments, waking up at 5.30 a.m. every day to do treatments before school, taking pills with every meal, difficulties breathing during athletics, life with cystic fibrosis has not been easy. Although this may be true, CF has pushed me to stay involved, strengthen my character, and help me become driven in all I do.
Without this disease, I would not be the strong, confident, positive person I am. Therefore, I own my cystic fibrosis. It does not own me. Now to the pool play breakdown. Messiah Valley Christian is with Rehoboth and Desert Academy. Texaco is the two. They're on top of Pool B with Santa Rosa and Hagerman. Magdalena, Loving, and Mescalero are in Pool C. And the final grouping is Escalante, Dulce, and Pecos. How's this for your stat of the day? Texaco has played in the championship every season except one over the last 13 years. That's unbelievable. This year, Texaco is going for five in a row, and the pressure seems to be there every year. I think they put pressure on themselves because they want to hold step up to have a standard. But again, each team's different, so we approach it differently and we try to do things to maybe alleviate the stress. I think there's always a little bit of pressure, especially being, you know, Texaco High School. You know, we always have that target on our back, but um, I think it just makes it fun for us. You know, we know we have a lot to, you know, expectations high and so it's just it makes it fun for us yeah I think there's a little bit of pressure but um, coach Galen always wants us to know that I mean there's a lot more than just winning winning is important but it comes with learning lessons that will later in life pay off let's break down class 3a shall we st. Michael's told us they were watching our show and you know what they are gonna be happy because they landed the top spot. Yep, insert the cheers now. I think I can hear them from here. St. Michael's is loaded with seniors. They have eight of them. They also won the Tournament of Champions this season. It was the first time in 20 years a team from Santa Fe won that tournament. They're led by senior captain Michaela Martinez. She's been on the varsity since the eighth grade. They have a big hitter in six-foot sophomore Lily Barker with over 300 kills. 3A, Pool A, St. Michael's, Cobre, and Thoreau, Pool B, Navo Prep, Hatch Valley, and Santa Fe Prep. Sandia Prep has won three straight titles in a row, and they're going for four. They started slow, losing four of their first seven, but they found their groove since, reeling off 14 straight wins. And get this, Sandia Prep hasn't lost a game since September 22nd. They are in a pool with Santa Fe Indian School in Laguna Acoma. Tularosa is an interesting story because they were 4-17 and 17 last season. Now they're 19-4. and four. What a turnaround. Alyssa Montoya is their veteran outside hitter who leads the team in kills and digs. Robertson and Socorro, you are in. Let's see. We've done one, two, three. What comes next? That's right. Class 4A comes next. The top squad is St. Pius. The Sartans are led by Jordan Russell. Defensively, this team is really good. They are 16-4, but all of their losses are to 5A teams. St. Pius won it all in 2016, but lost in the championship match last year. The Sartans are in pool play with Santa Teresa and Silver. Hope Christian was ranked number two today. They're 18-3, and, and they transitioned well to a new coaching staff. They only have two seniors. One of them, Ashley Thorsted, leads the state in assists. The Huskies are in a pool with Kirtland Central and Española Valley. Pool C is Artesia, Powake, and Academy. Goddard leads Pool D with Los Alamos and Los Lunas. Finally, Class 5A. The La Cueva Bears have been the favorites since the start of the year, and they lived up to the top billing. They are number one. They have a balanced squad with some outstanding hitters and great defense. Bree Mortensen is a New Mexico State commit. Their hitters include Mariana Sharp and Sidney McIntosh. McIntosh leads the team in kills, and they can come at you from all directions. Everyone into the pool for the last time today. Class 5A, the Bears are grouped with Rio Rancho and El Dorado. Defending state champ Sandia is two. They lead Pool B with Centennial and Hobbs. Look out for Las Cruces. Las Cruces hasn't won at all since taking back-to-back -back blue trophies in 2000 and 2001, but they are solid this season. Piedra Vista and Roswell are in that same pool. Pool D is Cibola, Volcano Vista, and Santa Fe. Good luck to all the teams. Pool play starts on Thursday. The championships will be played at the Santa Ana Star Center in Rio Rancho. Remember, the NFHS Network has you covered with championship action. You can watch the championship games live at nfhsnetwork.com slash NMAA, the title games for volleyball as well as football. The championship games for football will be shown on the NFHS Network. Fans can subscribe for an all access pass for just $9.95 a month. Go to nfhsnetwork.com. 
Thanks for watching our selection show. It was a tough seating process. We will see you on the court and remember to compete with class.